Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I'm joined today, as always, by Rob Anderson. Hello. And I am Brian Black, and today we are here to talk about some tips for lightweight backpacking. So we've gone over a few things when it comes to camping and things like that, but I really wanted to hit the topic of lightweight backpacking because it is something that I try to strive for whenever I'm out in the wilderness, and Mm -hmm. it's something that has benefited me tremendously in really every aspect of getting into the great outdoors. Sure. So I think it's kind of a cool topic to cover today. Yeah, and I think that the, a lot of the things you'll learn in lightweight backpacking, even if you never go lightweight backpacking, <laughs> is you learn how to cut things down in your gear to, I mean, I don't lightweight backpack, but the stuff in my kit weighs a lot less because of some of the tips that I've picked up. Yeah, and we we had a series on ITS written by Brian Green, who's a good friend of ours and frequent contributor to ITS, but he runs Brian's backpacking blog, and um, I will link to that. We'll make sure we link to that content in the episode intel, but he wrote a really good series on an introduction to lightweight backpacking, so we'll definitely refer you over there, but today is really more about the actual gear and the tips, uh, more, more than the philosophy, so... Mm-hmm. If you're interested in learning kind of the why behind lightweight backpacking and you really need a better explanation than just, hey, it weighs less, so yeah. it's not going to hurt you as more as much, <laughs> um, definitely head over there in the links in the episode intel and we'll have that for you. And the other thing, this is kind of where I want to get started, is my first experience with this was picking up a book called Lightweight Backpacking Tips by Mike Clellan. So that's where I started down the rabbit hole of lightweight backpacking because mm-hmm. I found this great book. It's it's pretty cool. It's illustrated, so it's got these great graphics um, instead of photos. So instead of you know him taking photos of all his gear, he had an illustrator kind of draw everything, and it's really well done. And I, I think it's a fantastic book, and I, t- I picked up an amazing amount of tips and principles from this book, so I'd highly recommend it. I'll put that in the episode intel too. But in that book, he really recommends having a – a lightweight backpacking setup so you have kind of everything staged and ready to go so you can grab it just to get away for a day or even an overnighter or the weekend and I've really always wanted to do that and I still have yet to this day to put together something like that so he advocates you know having everything all weighed out and etc which we'll get into here in a second but just having that ready to go so all you have to do is drop in some food and you can be gone and and this is not like a bug out type thing. No, this yeah. is a hey, I want to get away for the weekend, You're or I want to, yeah, I want to yeah. go get out into nature for the day, and I might be gone all night. You know, it's it's one of those type of things. And I love to be able to do that, and I just haven't put that together yet. I've got more mm-hmm. gear than I know what to do with, but yeah. yet it's getting everything together and having it right. staged is I don't know. I don't know why I I have so much trouble with that. So I want to talk about it. So maybe it gets me <laughs> off my my butt to to finally do it. But so that's kind of what he. He advocates, and it is kind of a cool way to do things because you know you've always got your backpacking gear together and ready to go. So a lot of the different tips that he talks about specifically in the book are are pretty nitpicky to some people. I mean, mm-hmm. he really dials into, I mean, using a, a, you know, like a disposable plastic water bottle you would get at the store for your water bottle instead of a Nalgene or instead of hmm. um, another device that you buy specifically to hold water. So just taking a... A normal plastic water bottle and he even talks about removing that little ring you know if you take off the lid from a plastic wow. water bottle you got the little ring there so you know like, he's serious yeah, about like, cutting weight yeah. if he's having you clip the <laughs> ring off the water it's bottle. not just cutting down your toothbrush he's literally taking Cut the, the label ring. off yeah no wow. oh that's definitely in there yeah <laughs> but anyway that's that's the point at which this guy gets to and it seems kind of ocd but at the same time it it really adds up, and you know we kind of saw that mm-hmm. when you kind of helped me put together my loadout for Mammoth this last Absolutely. year. You saw how just cutting little things, like we went through and we weighed everything, but then 
I was like, okay, it's too heavy. Where are we going to cut? Yeah. So it's you know, like, I can't possibly cut anything else. <laughs> and that's what you do. You, you start calling and then you start lowering your standards. Yes. And it comes down to like, do I really need this many socks? Yeah. Nope. Turns out you don't. Let's ax this. Yep. You know, and you just keep going. I think we shaved like six pounds off yeah. or something. It was, it, was nuts. Am- it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We just started taking off small things and then it just added up really quickly. But, you know, the, the big premise behind all this is you have to know what your stuff weighs. So yeah. that's the starting point with all this stuff. If you're interested in getting into lightweight backpacking, if you're just interested in saving a little weight when you go out into nature with your family or something like that, a great starting point is just to buy a cheapo scale from Amazon for, you know, probably less than 20 bucks, a yep. little digital scale, yep. and you can tar it or tear it or however you pronounce that word. Who knows? Uh, you know, put a box on top of the scale and you know put things into it and basically get weights for larger items too so th- starting there is a is a huge benefit and in brian's series that he wrote for its he's got a pdf and excel document type list that you can use if you're looking for something to to kind of fill out on a to track your weights yeah to track stuff. your weights yeah That's so you good. can put the item and it's got weight and ounces or grams or whichever method you want to use to uh to weigh it Brian uh, comes from the good old UK, so he uses the metric <laughs> system, which is a little over my head sometimes. But, you know, I, I had an interesting epiphany the other day. I was, Kelly watches that British baking, mm-hmm. British Bake Off or something like yeah. that. So they were doing all their measurements in the kitchen by just dumping stuff onto a bowl and a scale. And I was like, Yeah, they don't measure like, using cups. Oh, and yeah. Stuff. I was like, Oh my God, that's yeah. actually pretty cool. So you're not messing up a bunch of, dirtying up a bunch of measuring cups. And Well, and not only that, it's actually super uh, specific and accurate. Yeah. Because a cup, due to air and yeah. things like that, might not always be a cup, but 100 grams yeah. is always 100 grams. And I mean, I've always known the metric system had some, yeah. some <laughs> benefits, but it wasn't until that little mm-hmm. light bulb went off over my head that I was like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway. I mean, I think the biggest thing is like no decimal points. Yeah. That's that like too. with grams, it goes over, it's kilograms. You're like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, whatever weight you put it down in, uh, yeah. most of the scales will go between. I think there's an American standard scale that's really good on Amazon. We'll see if we can put that in there. Yeah. But I, I mean, know I've bought at least two digital scales from Amazon. They've yeah. both been pretty good. Just make sure the max weight is within what yes. you are going to be weighing. Cause yeah. And we'll talk about that too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the I guess that's actually a pretty good jumping off point. So the big three in your weight when you're talking about backpacking, and this is camping too. I mean, if you're if you're carrying weight on your back, this applies to you, whether you're interested in lightweight backpacking or not. Um, there's a couple of different levels too. Like you can go down the rabbit hole and get into ultralight backpacking and things <laughs> like that. So, um, you know, just know that there's more that you can do yeah. other than <laughs> what we're going to talk about. So. If this is way too much for you to, to handle, you know, anyway, maybe we'll, maybe <laughs> don't maybe don't look up ultralight backpacking. Yeah, stick with lightweight. Yeah, so the big three is where the majority of your weight comes from when you're backpacking, and that's your tent, your backpack, and your uh, sleeping bag. So ideally, you want each of those levels to be sub three pounds, and the lighter okay. you can get, the better. Like, for instance, my sleeping bag that I use – Pretty much for about three seasons. Uh, It's pretty good as a three-season bag, meaning not winter. It's roughly a pound and a half, something like that. Yeah, it's down, which I actually used a different bag this year at Mammoth that I got from Nemo, and it's like a synthetic down. So it's still got the properties of down, but yet it's not going to completely crap out on you if it gets wet. And that's that's my huge concern using a down bag that's that light. Is that I'm I'm always very nervous about condensation and water you right. know, getting into it and affecting it. So especially because it's the only sleep system <laughs> yeah, you have. Exactly. And yeah, but you know if you're if that's not a, a super huge concern for you, you know there's other things you can do too to save weight if you don't if you want to just stay around that you know two to three pound um, limit with with a bag. But and then that goes for the the actual backpack as well and mm-hmm. your tent. So. A tent might not be a tent. It might be something like um, a, a tarp that you use. So maybe mm-hmm. you rig up a tarp shelter and you have just like a mosquito net to put over your sleeping bag. Sure. And you use some kind of ground sheet, which you can even use a, you know, like an emergency survival blanket mm-hmm. that's super lightweight as a ground sheet. So you can you can save weight just about everywhere if you kind of think outside the box a little bit. Well, and it depends on your situation. Like we're in Texas and yep. at this point in the year... I'm not going camping. <laughs> well, I mean, even if you were... 
You don't need a tent for the cold, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, the only thing sure. you might need to mitigate is the mosquitoes. Other mm-hmm. than that, there's not really a necessity for fully enclosed shelter. Yeah, I'm just I'm not a fan of like staying in the shade all day in 100 degree weather. I've I've yeah, done it before. Not, it's just not that enjoyable to not, me. Not fun. So yeah, I like to I like to camp right before it gets hot and then after it's done. Yep. So that's the only downside of <laughs> living in Texas. You got to deal with a few months of true, a few months of the hot, and then. Yeah, you know, we talked about you know different options for a tent. And there are some tents, like real tents, that will that will get down below the three pound option. I mean, you wow. can have. I know that. I'm trying to think offhand, I know that the one that I've reviewed on ITS before from Nemo is definitely sub two pounds, I believe. Okay. Wow. So I'll link to that too, just so you know what it is. I, I forgot the actual name of the the Nemo tent itself, but it's like a single person. It's got an inflatable beam in it and stuff like gotcha. that. So, so what's your opinion on hammocks to kind hammocks of knock great. out tent no, that's and a great sleeping idea. bag? Yeah. Um, I just know that you can go down the rabbit hole with hammocks too. Yeah. So you can get a hammock and straps plus a mosquito net plus a, you know, a, you know, ground pad inside the hammock. So you can, you can get heavy even yeah. though you take a hammock. So <laughs> it's a little misleading. You think, oh, it'd be super light because I got a hammock. Well, real cushy, you know, lazy boy hammock. Yeah. And, you know, just a tip too, you don't have to take all the stuff sacks that go along with things too. Mm-hmm. So that's a great way to cut weight as well. You know, just taking a, a, a one big overall waterproof stuff sack that fits in your backpack yeah. if it's not already lined or waterproof which even if it was, I would take ju- at least a lightweight sill nylon stuff sack that's sure. waterproof because I, I just hate getting stuff wet. Um, but, you know, you can stuff your sleeping bag or stuff your tent inside of that and then put other stuff on top of it, and it's really not a big deal. Yeah. So everybody thinks, well, I, I know personally I used to be in that mindset. I was like, oh, well, this is the stuff sack for the sleeping bag, and this is the stuff sack for the pillow, and this is the stuff sack for you. So it's like by the time you have all these little stuff sacks, yeah. You know, that's that could be two pounds right there just in those little things. So yeah, that's a, that's definitely a way you can you can cut weight as well. And I say that because hammocks are notorious for that. So, you know, your straps have a stuff a sack, the bags. hammock has yeah. a stuff sack, the <clears throat> mosquito net has a stuff sack, so yeah. But yeah, I love hammocks. I, I think I have three of them from that Eno Eno Nest, I think is mm-hmm. or Nest, something like that. Yeah. I think e- Eno is the main Yeah. Because that's the one that fits in the Nalgene, right? Yeah. Okay. One cool. of them does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The there's like a double, double something. Gotcha. Double bird, double, double stuff. Bird, double I stuff. Don't know. <laughs> double stuffed hammock. <laughs> yeah. The best of. Yeah. And then so after the big three, you really kind of start to look at ways that you could trim items based on kind of a multi-purpose aspect too, and that can be that really can be a lot of things. So, mm-hmm. you know, multi-purpose could be taking the internal frame out of your backpack and replacing it with a with a sleeping pad for rigidity and then using the sleeping pad obviously when you sleep you know and then not having to take the weight of a frame sheet so Mm -hmm. and i know that's kind of you know pushing it but you know we're we're also talking about you know the a book that advocates cutting your backpack straps too like all the things that you're not needing so every buckle every little piece of webbing that you're not using that's active in you know that's necessary for yeah. carrying weight you can remove so even shortening straps can save weight on a backpack True. so and you're not going to find like oh i <clears throat> i lost four pounds on my kit by doing this it's going to be two ounces here four ounces mm-hmm. here and that you know after 10 or 15 of those there's your pounds yeah so yeah and i know i've mentioned this before but even when you go on a trip and you think that you couldn't possibly live without something while you're gone, you know, take a good inventory when you get back as well. So, you know, you got your pile of the stuff you used, you got the stu- pile of the stuff that you didn't use, yeah. and then you got a pile of the stuff that's that's really important, but maybe you didn't use it. So maybe sure. there's a med kit in there that right. you really just want to have for not only security, but just in case something does happen, just right. because it didn't happen one trip, not it doesn't mean it's not going to happen on another. So... Those are kind of the three piles that I sort in when I come back. And, and then, I've had to do that a couple yeah. times. And then you start to kind of build a, a data, you know, kind of an internal database. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not writing it down, just kind of going through the motions of, of looking at that stuff, you kind of start to go, oh, you know, I've brought Paracord the last yeah. 10 times that I've <laughs> gone on a trip and I've never used it. Yeah. M- not more than like 10 feet. Okay, Time well, to take the 50 feet and yep. narrow it down to 10 feet. So. Yep. 
you know, just little things like that. And hey, I could take, you know, small dummy cord rather than full on paracord mm-hmm. because I really don't need the, you know, the strength of normal paracord. Sure. I just needed a line to hang my socks on or right. something like that. And so. could you hang your socks on something else? Right. Or like, yeah. you know, do you take a fork and a spoon? Right. Combine that or take one, you know. Take a sport. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and make it titanium. Ready made for you. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even a... A handkerchief could be a multi-purpose item, too. You can dry your hands with it. You can blow your nose with it. You can put it over your head to shield yourself from the sun. Mm -hmm. Um, You can soak it in a cool stream and put it on the back of your neck to cool yourself down. I mean, there's just so many purposes that you could could have with certain items if you just kind of think outside the box with that a little bit, too. I mean, even your cook system, which is another pretty large component of Mm -hmm. your overall carry uh, when you're dealing with backpacks can be kind of multi-purpose too so like i use my jet boil to cook food in and i've i've really stripped down the jet boil too like there's certain things you really don't need from the jet boil you don't need the little stabilizer brace that's in it (laughs) you don't need the secondary piece that goes on top of it so you can put a frying pan on it you don't need you don't need the little measurement plastic bowl that fits on the bottom of it that kind of protects the fins you know there's, there's just things you can even strip off the jet boil and I've gone to the degree um, in the past of even taking off the kind of the insulative thing that's over the oh, like cup the sleeve part. Thing? Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I kind of go back and forth that because I've I've had success with it, and it's just and sometimes it's just been a pain in the butt because I had to use a glove to you know sure. pour the hot water out. So the way that I work a jet boil is that I'm only putting water into it, so I never cook food in the jet boil. I learned that the hard way a long time ago. <laughs> um, bad oatmeal story, sorry, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so I just put water in there and then I pour it, you know, the, the boiled water into the meals that I'm heating up and things like that. The dehydrated meals or, um, stuff that I'm reconstituting. And I'm sure that saves fuel. It does. Because you're it's only safe. heating water. Yeah, it saves fuel. And I try to, I try to do that. I try not to use the jet boil to cook necessarily. I try to, whatever I take for food, it can either be eaten as it is without heating right. or, um, reconstitute with, with, hot, with bo- hot boiling water. And then, you know, I have made coffee before in the jet boil, and that's an easy thing to rinse out, though, mm-hmm. and, you know, get it ready for boiling water at the next meal. I probably so, wouldn't mind some latent coffee in my food anyway. Yeah, I'm really not a, a huge – it's not really a huge deal to me. So, yeah. Plus, boiling is always good because it removes contaminants mm-hmm. that might be in collected water if, if you're going that route. Wouldn't suggest that necessarily, but sure. you know, boiling is a very safe way to, to remove everything. You know, and along those lines, I think we've talked before, either here on or on gear tasting, about different, um, you know, removing various protozoa and bacteria and right. viruses and things from water. So um, I always have some type of filtration method, whether mm-hmm. it's the Aquamira drops, and I even repackage those. So the packages that they come in are still pretty small, yeah. but there's no way you need all those drops for even a week long camping trip. Sure. So it's always good to repackage everything. And that's kind of the that's kind of the gist of a lot of this too is repackaging can save a ton of weight. Just, yeah. Just putting stuff into another another container that's smaller that'll kind of help restrict what you're taking is is great. I have a little Nalgene makes some great uh, containers. You would think you know Nalgene just makes water bottles, but they actually make these little tiny containers that are perfect for re- repackaging stuff. Yeah. And you they're they get pretty light too. They're little kind of. I don't know. It's, it's heavy duty plastic. I don't know if it's the same Lexan or whatever HD, HPD or I think whatever. It's similar, yeah. but it's thinner, and they're they're they look less durable than they are. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had some in bags that get stomped on and things, and yep. they've held. Yeah, they're great containers. I even have like a little flip top lid container that I repackaged deodorant in. So nice. I'll like chop off or you know cut away shave a piece. Some yeah, <laughs> sh- shave away some deodorant, put it in that little thing, and kind of let it heat up a little bit so it kind of melts down into the into the form and then i use that for nice i just kind of dab it on my fingers and put it under my arms and you know (laughs) it is it is what it is deodorant on the trail and everything right (laughs) but you know that's that kind of leads into the dop kit a little bit and that's a great way to save save weight as well because the the dop kit is a lot of stuff that you can go crazy with you know i've seen plenty of people backpacking that take even the travel size toothpaste is just yeah. ridiculous when it comes to the amount of toothpaste. Even in there. still in the box. Yeah. yeah. So, I've gone a little crazy before and made <laughs> toothpaste dots, and I really don't recommend it. I mean, I've 
I've really tried to make those work, and I just I just do not it's like tough. toothpaste dots. So I've I've gotten to the point of basically just repackaging some toothpaste, and it's really not that big of a deal. I just to make toothpaste dots, what you do is you you take a piece of aluminum foil, you sprinkle it with uh, what do you call it baking soda, and then you put you put the the drop of toothpaste down mm-hmm. on the paper. And then as it dries, the baking soda helps ah. helps it release from the tin foil, and then you have these little, almost Hershey Kiss looking, <laughs> drops. drops of toothpaste, and you can put them in a bag with a little more baking soda so they don't stick together as well. Um, but you can you can basically put those in a little easy dose pill package, and uh-huh. you know basically chew one up to brush your teeth. And I just I don't know. There's something about the texture or the taste or something yeah. just doesn't. It's like brushing with dried up toothpaste you got to reconstitute with your saliva so it's I mean, kind it's of kinda <laughs> well it's kind of gross yeah i mean just the taste to me gotcha. i mean there's plenty of people that i think do it but i'm just not in that camp. have you tried those little like wisps the little yes yeah self-contained those are good too i've had good look at those those might get a little more heavy depending on how mm-hmm. many days you're going to be out yeah and the thing about that is too you still got to have toothpaste to put it on one of those or some of it's them have it like he- built in. Yeah, but, but it's going to get heavy if you take right. you know eight of those exactly. or something. So, so you might you might as well look at the dots if right. you're if you're needing that much weight savings. Yeah, or just cut a toothbrush and yeah, you know take some. How much repackaged. of the toothbrush handle do you really need? Yeah, it's true though. Enough to grip. Yeah, you just need enough to grip in your hand, and you can get rid of the rest of it. But yeah, and that's uh, I really love those easy dose pill pouches. You can get them on Amazon for pretty cheap for a big package of them, but they work great and. I've talked about those before with all my med kit contents and like mm-hmm. the the larger aid bag that I keep medications in, or not really medications more over the shelf stuff like yeah. aspirin and Tylenol and things like that. I'll repackage all that stuff even in those little easy dose pill packages and gotcha. either write the expiration date on the bag mm-hmm. or have a little piece of paper in there with the expiration date. So that's handy. Yeah, it's a cool way to to repackage stuff with those little bags. They're they're worth their weight in gold. Yeah. Well, so this on this whole subject, I think that. One of the things I've noticed is that the lightweight backpacking, you're not taking anything that doesn't have to do with you sleeping and moving, basically. Like this yeah. isn't this isn't for comfort or, you know, you're doing an activity. If you're if you're going out in the outdoors or whatever and you're backpacking, that seems to be more the activity. It's not like, oh, I'm setting up to go do this activity like you were doing mammoth. Like you're not going to lightweight backpack mm-hmm. a mammoth because of what all you have to take. Yeah. You can trim down as much weight as you can, but this is more of like a... Well, I still took a six-pound Alice pack. You yeah. Know? So. so, yeah. <laughs> Just because I needed the, the rigidity and strength to, sure. to carry a big rifle and things like that. So. Yeah. And that has a frame which helps your body. Yeah. At a certain point, it might be worth taking a little more weight if the frame can help support If so, yeah. Gear. I mean, if, I'm always on the lookout for options, though, and that's kind of what this mindset helps with, too, mm-hmm. is it starts to get you looking at your gear in a different way, and that's, that's really the take-home from all this. If yeah. you can... If you can just start looking at things in a different way, and you know, we talked, I think even on the last episode about wrapping duct tape around an algae, you know, right. just just little Tiny little, little tips like that that you can use to to save. Yep, it will go a long way with with what you're carrying on the trail. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks for tuning in to Gear Tasting Radio. If you like what we're doing, remember to check us out every Tuesday on iTunes, and we'll also have that episode intel available both in the the podcast notes as well as on itstactical.com on the episode intel and you know if you like what we're doing we've recently just started a patreon channel which allows us to kind of give you back something in return some exclusive behind the scenes access to what we do here at its in exchange for your support so check that out in the episode intel as well we'll put a link there and don't forget every tuesday tune in